All right, so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you guys how to um, make your mini vase at home. So I have my um, template pieces here. I haven't cut that one apart yet, but I did have everything. Um, I'm gonna do two sides, the front and the back, and my base today. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to bevel cut that um, to combine everything. So first things first, with your clay, I want you to work on flattening a big chunk of it out. Again, the mini one for home is not gonna be huge, so let's not use a ton of clay. Um, but this is probably gonna be sufficient for my pieces that I need. Um, the same process is gonna apply at school. So if you're at school and you're working on the bigger slab piece, you're gonna roll one side at a time. It's gonna take um, this much or more clay per side. So the, the amount of clay that you're gonna need for this project is gonna be greater for what you have at school. Okay, so first I'm gonna start out with just smashing my clay so it's nice and flat. And then I'll use my rolling pin to start thinning it out a little bit. I roll and flip. So that's the magic to rolling a nice even slab. So roll and flip every time. And that just keeps your clay from sticking to your board. It helps make it nice and even. Um, and gives you a nice work surface. Okay, so I feel like that's pretty good for my, my vase. Now here's another thing to consider. For the small vase, you want your clay to be a little bit thinner because the project is smaller. It doesn't need to support a ton of weight. For your bigger slab, you're gonna want your slabs to be a little thicker so they can stand up um, and be nice and tall. Okay, so here's my, my slab is rolled out. Um, if you wanna think about the thickness for a good slab, so if you can kind of see compared to my fingers, that's how thick my slab is. Okay, next thing we're gonna do here is lay out our pieces and we're gonna cut each piece out just kind of quickly here. It doesn't take very long to do all four pieces. So I'll leave the camera rolling. So there is side one. Since that didn't ruin my piece very much, I'll just keep using that. Try to do this so I don't have to roll out very many slabs. Here's side two. The beauty of um, doing videos is you can fast forward if I'm too slow for you. <laughs> um, and then I need two of these. These are gonna be my sides and it looks like I'm probably gonna run out of clay here so I'm gonna have to take my scraps and roll out one more piece but I can make one of my sides and I think I can do my base out of what's here. And that will be enough to show you guys the construction technique that I want you to see. Okay, so there's my side, one of them. And then my base piece this is my base. Um, I'll fit it right here. Okay, so I can pull all these extra pieces of clay apart It's like making cookies at Christmas or whatever, whenever you decide to make sugar cookies, it's the same basic idea here. This is gonna be the, how about this one? This will be the piece I used for my base. It was a little thick, so I just needed a little more space. I can roll that out. Okay, so now we've got everything set up. Um, you, of course, at home, you would need one more side piece in order to have all your pieces ready. Um, reminder, all of your extra clay, you're just gonna put that into a nice ball and put it back into um, your bag. Keep it tucked in there. If you're at school um, and you have extra clay, the expectation would be that you put it back into a ball and if it's good, you can put it into the bag, if you got it from the bag, or put it back into the yellow barrel. If it's been sitting out for a while, then you can put it into the recycle, into the wet, into the gray barrel where there's some water. Um, so I'll leave that up to you guys to figure out if you're working at school next week when you're starting on your big project. Okay, next step here, we've got our pieces. This is the skill I want you guys to use for this project. It's called a bevel cut. So if I just start standing my pieces up together like this, score and slip these edges together, I have a really weak um, connection point it's not gonna stay together very well and it's gonna be pretty prone to cracking. So we're gonna use our 
pin tool and not on the top, I'll say this is going to be the top of my base, but on the side and the bottom, I am going to just hold my pin tool at a slight angle and I'm going to bevel cut the sides and the bottom. So anywhere your clay is going to be connected to another piece of clay, I want you guys to use this bevel cut system. It doesn't have to be a perfect angle. Um, doesn't have to be a perfect line because it's clay. So we can always, you know, manipulate that as we're scoring and slipping things together. My base is going to have a bevel cut on all four sides just because of it's going to be connected to four pieces of clay. You'll notice I can only cut my bevel in one direction. <sighs> so I just hold my pen tool kind of at an angle and I always cut towards myself. So there's my base. Um, and then this is the front and the back of my project. So again, I'm still going to bevel cut this. It's a little bit harder because it's a more, de I don't know, detailed and curved design for the sides of this one. Again, I can only cut in one direction, so I just flipped my piece over, do my bevel cut again. Okay. Um, and then this is the base. So I need a bevel cut there as well. So I think with what I have here, I have three pieces um, beveled. I can go ahead and score and slip it together and show you how it's going to connect. And then I'll kind of finish and do that again in a second here. So score all the way around, all the way around my base piece. I'm going to work on the base and one side right now of my kind of designed front piece. And on this side piece, I'm just going to connect um, on this side. I'll go, go ahead and score both sides just for the heck of it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to connect, um, this is the front of my vase, to the base. So I've got a little bit of water. I'm going to put some water here to make a little bit of slip on my clay. And I'm going to stand this up, press that together. And I'm just kind of gently pressing from this outside edge to try to get that to seal. Um, we're going to come back in just a second and add coils in here so that it won't crack, but obviously this is not going to stand up by itself. So the next thing I'm going to do is put some water on the edge of my side so I can get this connected so it'll stand up. So I'm going to do that and then just curve my clay as I'm connecting it. And where mine has a crease at the edge, kind of right here, I'm not going to worry too much about making that super sharp right now because once it starts to get leather hard, I can come back in with a rolling pin um, and really firm up these curves and make them look a little bit nicer. So right now, while it's really soft, I'm not going to worry too much about that. The next thing I'm going to do here is on the inside. Okay, so I've got two pieces connected. I'm going to go ahead and just roll out some really little coils and smooth that into my inside seam. And that's just gonna help make sure that my project actually stays together and it doesn't crack when it's drying. Gives it a lot more strength. Also, since we wanna use these as an actual vase, it'll help seal it so the water doesn't leak out. Okay, so I've got those two corners are sealed now. And then again, a little bit more clay to go down um, the inside. And for you guys, you know, when you're working at home, the nice thing about working at home is you could um, roll your slabs out, let them sit and kind of firm up for about 15 minutes, and then they wouldn't be as wiggly as mine are. So if you do that and step away for a few minutes, you'll come back and your project is already gonna be a little bit more um, able to hold its form. My clay happens to be super wet. Um, I think I recycled it from something else, so. Okay, so here's what the inside of your project should look like. I have, you know, this seam is fully sealed, the bottom is sealed, my next step is going to be doing um, the same thing with this piece. That's upside down. <laughs> um, bevel cutting it and connecting it. So I'll do that and we'll move on. 
All right, so the next thing here, I've got my side, my last side bevel cut and ready to attach. This is where it gets a little bit trickier. So I'm gonna curve everything together here, stretch my clay where I need to. Um, because inside of your vase, you still need to uh, go ahead and seal all of these inside pieces. So inside here, I still need to um, put my coils in every area that I can. Once I add this piece, my last side, it's gonna be really hard to get my hands back down into the bottom. So once you add that last part, you can use, um, probably what's gonna work best for this is a pencil to kind of, as you're going, work on just sealing up that edge. You're not gonna be able to put your clay down in there. So you're gonna to wanna to seal it as best you can using a pencil, making sure that it's nice and um, pulled together. Okay, so I've got mine all constructed now. I have all the sides on there. Um, if you look closely, it looks terrible. Um, you can see lots of fingerprints in here. You can see that if I were to put water in here, it's gonna fall apart and ooze water everywhere. So now I'm down to the part where um, we start doing more of the detail-oriented work. Okay, so on the outside of your vase, you're gonna wanna work your way around and you know seal up all of your seams um, so it looks really nice and smooth. My clay is still really wet. So that doesn't help a lot. I probably should just, you know, take a break for 20 minutes and come back because it'll be a little bit easier to manipulate. I've got my sponge here. Again, not wanting to add a lot of water because it's already pretty soft. But I'm working on making all of my seams look nicely sealed so that you cannot see the connection between um, the pieces of clay. Okay, so that's one really important finishing step. I don't want to see that you used the slab construction technique. All right, so just really working to make your seams all look refined and finished. Okay, so I would continue working my way around my whole project to make everything um, smooth. And then the last thing we're gonna talk about here in a few minutes is um, adding some detail and texture. Okay, top of mine also looks pretty terrible right now. So again, maybe using my sponge to go around the top smooth off all these imperfect areas. Working on the inside to hide all of the clay coils that I put in there, so those are nice and smooth. Okay, so we want the inside and the outside to look really nice. If you get to the point where you think um, it's looking pretty good, maybe the top isn't quite level, and that's bugging you if you're a perfectionist, um, you can take your project and flip it upside down and kind of you know, do this and hope that that gives you a nice flat edge that's a little bit more, more even. Okay, so spend a few minutes at this point really working on refining all of your edges, um, trying to get rid of any crumbs, just making everything look as smooth as possible. All right, so um, at this point I've worked on the outside surface of my vase a little bit more. I've worked on the inside. Um, I've got all of my seams sealed. I've got my surface smoothed off just a little bit. I've double checked that the base is also sealed. Maybe run your sponge around that one more time at this point just to really smooth off any of the clay crumbs that might be on there. And then what I'm gonna do now, since again, my vase is pretty soft, I am going to just kind of loosely wrap this probably until tomorrow, so about a day. Loosely wrapped it with just a little bit of air in the bag um, so that I can come back tomorrow and start working on um, on adding more detail in here. So I'm gonna do a V cut here, start playing around with my textures that I'm gonna add. Again, this is a mock-up or a small version of our big one that we're working on at school too. So this is a great way to play around with all of those um, textures that you thought maybe would be good. All right, so that's gonna be the end of the, the starting point for this project. You should have your vase constructed and it should look pretty good. We're still gonna to continue to refine.